What's up everyone? Welcome to the channel. This is the Leeds United Centenary Special Part 1. Let's roll it. Welcome back to the channel then everyone, and if you are new, welcome to the channel. I'm Karen from Westwood Table Soccer, and this is episode one of a special uh, mini-series, maybe three or four episodes long, um, about Leeds United and about our painting of the 100 years of Leeds. So a little historical kit journey through the colours of Leeds United. If you are new to the channel, please click the subscribe button and don't forget to get the bell on so that we and you can always meet up when there's a new episode and you guys can see how this frame comes together. Now, my initial plan for this one was to be a complete building of the frame, but this was supposed to be, as I mentioned in my update video yesterday, my final week of furlough. So I was really, really trying to get the paintwork done so that I wouldn't let anybody down in terms of getting the artwork done and dusted. However, my period of furlough has been extended so I can relax a little bit, but it just means that the series is going to be slightly different to how I originally intended it and there's been a bit of a delay between the final episode of our last series and the first episode of this series. So without further ado, let's get into it then. In October 1919, Leeds City were wound up uh, by a joint FA and Football League Commission for basically refusing to open their accounts to the FA and the Football League Joint Commission all surrounding allegations about paying of guest players during the Great War, during the First World War. Now, it's widely accepted that Leeds City were doing it, but it's also widely accepted they weren't the only team to doing it, and I can pretty much guarantee you that is true. Clubs and professional clubs, etc., etc., would have been playing guest players during the war, obviously because some of their players were unfortunately taken to the war and lost during the war. So players and people from other countries that were stationed in England would have been playing football for these clubs. So it was unfortunate, and it's maybe why Leeds uh, have got that chip on their shoulder from that very day. So Leeds United were actually formed uh, the same day that Leeds City were wound up. Um, so they moved into the now vacant Ellen Road, which is where they still play to this day. So in their first season then, they were forced to play in the Midlands League, which is where the Leeds City Reserves had been playing. So they completed the season there, they took up those fixtures, and as we saw in the intro titles, that is the very first kit that they were wearing. So here's a quick still of one now. And my first question actually, and this is what I want to get the comments on today, is Leeds fans, if you know, or just kit aficionados out there, why was Leeds' first kit black and white stripes? Because they haven't used it again. Um, throughout their history. It was a one season thing because they changed their kit in 1920. Um, but yeah, so if you guys know, please drop in the comments below why Leeds United wore black and white stripes. And that very first Leeds United kit. As we said in the intro, um, we'd love to know why uh, the colour choice was selected and why it's never been used again. Um, interesting for me that the centenary kit actually is not uh, black and white stripes. Um, it's just an all-white kit. Very, very nice indeed. 
Um, but yeah, so if you guys know or have any idea as to why these initial colours were selected um, to be black and white, that would be amazing. So you can see here the different base combinations we've chosen um, for this kit. Now, got a couple that are sort of lighter. So the two on the end here with the two with the white inner disc and the black outer disc. Um, what that will do, putting it on that combination, is it brings out that white colour a little bit more and highlights and accentuates the black. Not so much for me as the other one in the middle. So the reverse of that, the black inner um, with the white disc. I would always have any team that is black and white stripes on this base. Um, just think it looks really good. The predominant colour in this kit is black, so having that black disc will really pop that out. Um, and in the same way that the white fires out on the other two, if you get that colour balancing right on the stripes, then the same will happen with this way round. And the final one on the end, who's actually completely finished, even with complete there, with his tie top. So you can see what that collar line will look like on the other, on the other three guys. Um, you can see it's not quite finished. It's a work in progress, but you can see on this guy on the end here, we've completely finished him with his tie top, with his brown uh, lace tying it together. Um, the all black base actually, again, it's another one that looks really, really good. And it's just part of what helps make these frames um, unique. So yeah, as we said before then, Leeds only wore this variation of colours for a single season whilst they were um, playing in the Midland League before they then changed their kit. So it's a great piece of history. Um, interesting that they've been repeated again, but that's how we did it. So there we go then, we just showed you guys uh, a few little examples of the same kit. So with this, there's actually four frames being painted at the same time. They are all using the same kits, um, but every frame we paint is completely unique. Even if we're doing essentially the same kits, there will be a difference. Now I don't just mean in terms of the paintwork, um, where we make changes with, let's say, facial hair, hair colours. Boot colours will probably be very similar. Um, but there will be difference in base combinations, there will be difference in skin tones throughout the course of fielding these together. But So with that one there, we spoke about the very first kit that Leeds wore then and the different base combinations that we've chosen for it. Now, once Leeds United were formed, um, the then Huddersfield Town Chairman had an idea to amalgamate or merge Leeds and Huddersfield together. Now, what he wanted to do was create a brand new operation that operated out of Leeds Ellen Road. Now, what happened after that was that the Huddersfield fans weren't happy with this. The supporters rallied together and they managed to do a little bit of fundraising and they bought him out of Huddersfield. So essentially end any plans of a merger. And all that happened there was the former chairman of Huddersfield Town went, all right, I'm off to Leeds then. So he moved into Leeds and that is where the blue and white stripe kit came from. Now. There was a couple of different variations of this. Now, essentially, it was identical to those colours of Huddersfield Town. Um, they had it for about 14, 15 seasons in different um, different connotations, different varieties. The one we have chosen is from 1930 to 1933. Now, the reason I picked this one is because I liked the addition of the navy sock. So two different blues in the same kit. Um, nice wing collar and button top design um, that they would have worn uh, during that period. Here is kit number two then. Now we've got actually four different base combinations for this one. As we move along the line, we've got a navy base with a blue inner. The next one we've got is an all blue. Then we've got the white outer blue inner, which is probably what Sputo would have done. And then on the end there, on the completed figure, we've gone for the white outer and the blue inner. Now the socks on this one, as we mentioned, are navy and it's part of what really helps set this kit off. Um, as opposed to just being blue and white stripes, um, the same as Huddersfield. Now, during this period, as I said, this was the selection between 1930 and 1933, and we've added some facial hair features to try and kind of bring that in. You'll notice with this one, and in fact the previous one, the colour of the boots um, is a real leathery brown colour to try and go with that era. Um, in 1930-31, Leeds were relegated from the first division. They were a bit of a yo-yo club um, during this period. Um, they were allowed to get actually alongside probably the biggest club in England now, um, as much as it pains me to say it, although I don't think they're big in terms of performance, they're just big in terms of club size at Manchester United. And it wasn't their home form. Leeds were decent at Ellen Road. The support obviously was as good then as it is now, with 10 home wins and three draws and only eight home defeats. 
On the road, though, Leeds were not so pretty, losing 15 games and winning just twice. So they were relegated second from bottom. Uh, Man United did finish below them. Um, in the second season they wore this kit, they promoted so they went straight back up. True yo-yo ability. Now, in that season, they finished second behind Wolverhampton Wanderers and lost just 10 matches in an entire season. Now, back then, it would have been two points for a win. Um, and that is how many points they finished behind Wolves that season, um, despite actually having beaten Wolves and drawn with Wolves, so being completely um, unbeaten against Wolves. However, they did lose to relegated Barnsley and 20th place Port Vale, which wouldn't have helped. So if they'd have won those games or at least drawn those two games, they probably would have gone up as champions. And in the final season, they wore this kit. They are actually extremely successful, finishing a creditable eighth in the league with 44 points. And they were much, much better away from home in this season. And they lost just eight away matches. So this was their Huddersfield town then, as we mentioned before. Basically, the former Huddersfield chairman took over at Leeds and decided to just rip off their colours. So that is what they are wearing here. As we spoke about there then, Leeds had a fairly up and down period in the three seasons that they wore that kit. In the final season, they found themselves quite successful in the first division, finishing in eighth position. Um, so the next kit we're going to come on to then is the change that they made from those blue and white stripes back to uh, colours similar to that of their predecessors and their, their Phoenix in the Flames, uh, Leeds City. So... They changed to a blue and a yellow, which isn't quite the same colours. Um, Leeds City wore a very dark blue with what they call gold, um, goldy orange trim pieces. Uh, the final kit I think they wore was um, really, really dark blue with a gold, um, a gold V on it. Really, really nice kit actually. Um, but that was the final kit that Leeds City wore, and they were managed actually by the Arsenal great Herbert Chapman, who should. Have been banned from all football activities as everybody else involved with Leeds City was at the time but his ban was actually overturned uh, on appeal and he went on to do great things with Arsenal so in September 1934 then Leeds changed their colours from the blue and white stripes into the blue and yellow colours which they then wore for a number of seasons up until about 1961 um, various different again various different types designs of colours using those yellow and blue a different yellow and blue more of a royal blue and a normal yellow sort of color rather than that dark goldy yellow color and the one we have selected is actually one of their late seasons um, they only wore this variety for a season um, in 1938-39 and the reason i picked it um, is because i liked the yellow socks on it so most of the others have got predominantly blue socks or maybe a hoop socks but i thought this one actually with the yellow socks with the blue tops is a really really tidy addition um, it's a nice kit um, it was a really really nice design actually and Leeds have used variations of this as away kits um, but yeah so that's the chip kit we've got next in the frame
our third kit then is the final one they would have worn, the final full season before um, the war started. And this for me, aesthetically, is one of the best ones. It's such a lovely balance of colours um, in this. So it's the blue and the yellow halves. This was the first choice made. They made these changes in 1934 to go to the blue and the yellow. So they wore variations of this half and half design um, from then right up until they changed it, changed the design again. Um, like I say, I went with this one because of the yellow socks. I think they really stand out really nicely. Um, I think with this one, it's the white shorts that really helps set off the other colors because it gives you, sometimes when kits only have two colors in them, um, aesthetically they don't work as well. With this third color, and because it's a color that matches, you don't want to throw any third color in there, but with this one, because it's a third color that works so well with the rest of the team, um, those white shorts do look absolutely incredible and the half and half with a half and half collar as well Just two different base combinations for this one it had to be yellow out of blue inner and blue out of yellow inner um, In terms of ones that I would select if I was doing a team Either or really I'd say I'd probably err in more towards the blue inner yellow outer version um, But yeah, so for the one season that Leeds wore this kit, they finished a 13th position in 1938-39. However, they were third in November. So it was a little bit disappointing um, way to end. They tailed off quite significantly um, at the end of the season. Um, Which, unfortunately, uh, saw my lads, and I don't really want to say this, but saw my lads, Leicester City finish absolutely rock bottom of the first division and during said relegation Leeds United absolutely battered the Foxes 8-2 with Gordon Hodgson netting five of the eight which I believe is still a club record for player to score a single amount of goals in a game so we're going to move on pretty quickly we don't really want to talk about that anymore well done Leeds um good for you you beat us 8-2 it was 1938-39 no one cares for me personally then, the less said about the 38-39 season, the better. So let's move on from that straight away. Kit number four in this frame is another classic. Now I believe Subutio did a version of this originally. Now I know it as being banger um, as a reference number. I can't remember exactly what reference number it is. I'm going to guess. and I'm probably going to be wrong, but I'm going to say 26. Um, but yeah, so it's the predominantly yellow shirt, blue sleeves. Um, we did a tutorial video on this one, actually, if you want to check out exactly how we did it. The next kit we've got for you then is another absolute banger. It is this little version here. And again, it's the use of three colours, which I think really, really makes this work. Now, with the last one, the addition of the white really accentuated and brought out that yellow. By using the black in this one, it highlights the blue and darkens it and brings it down. Um, we've also done that with the addition... Uh, of navy um, bases and discs instead of blue ones um, and the yellow is a slightly more dull shade um, just to kind of try and bring it all back in together now the addition of the black white shorts I think would have worked with this as well um, but definitely a great choice going with black um, in terms of base combination I would choose with this one I would probably go navy out a yellow winner um, the other way works really really nicely as well but I just think with this one you need possibly to sort of highlight that yellow a little bit more lovely hoop socks on this one um this variation then they wore between 53 and 55 and in the first season they wore it in 53 54 Leeds were back in the second division they work like i said before they're a bit of a yo-yo club to be fair Leeds. um they did okay though in the second division they finished in 10th um 43 points um but again as we said before they're away form they were definitely better at home, home field advantage was big for Leeds. They actually only won three times um, away from Ellen Road during this season. Um, but they did have an absolutely talismanic striker who we'll talk about a little bit more in a minute. John Charles, who bagged an absolutely incredible 42 goals in the 1953-54 season. Um, incredible goals return, um, something you don't see on a regular basis anymore. There was a lot of strikers back then that were bagging upper 30s, um, but 42 is pretty, pretty good. 54, 55 then, they also wore this kit. Now, they finished fourth in the table during this season, um, which you'd think puts them uh, in. Nowadays, that would put you in the playoffs, but there was no playoffs back then. 
which is the top two were promoted and the bottom two were relegated. Um, but they finished fourth in the table. Now, the reason um, it's probably a little bit of a gut wrencher uh, for Leeds is they actually only finished a single point behind the top two on 53 points. So the top two went up with 54. So they missed out by one point. Um, they even finished above them, though. Rotherham actually finished on the same points as the top two. But I assume back then would have missed out on goal average. So leagues were very, very tight back then. So the top four there separated by just one point. And in Rotherham's case, just a single um, just a single goal average, I guess. Um, but it was the end of the 1955 season, or during 1955, um, that unfortunately Leeds were forced to sell um John Charles, in the 56-57 season when the west end of Ellen Road was destroyed by fire. Um, and to raise money to repair it, they had to sell him to Juventus. So something that probably wouldn't happen nowadays, um, you'd have thought, selling an absolutely talismanic striker. And to be fair, to be sent to Juventus in the 50s um, when foreign players and players moving abroad wasn't a massive, wasn't as big as it is today, it's pretty incredible that Juventus, A, knew about him, given that he was a second division footballer, um, and then that he ended up going over there. So pretty incredible, but Leeds lost out on a lot of goals in the 56-57 season. So as you can see there, we've only decided to use two different variations on base colours um, for this one, and the previous one as well, actually. But what we've done, because it's a darker kit, is that we've introduced the navy um, base shade in there as well, because it's got the black in there, just to help set those colours off. Now, the seasons that Leeds used that particular kit um, were a bit of a gut wrencher, as we said there, as we mentioned. So then they moved on. We moved on to the final time that they wore blue and yellow as predominantly home colour. And it was the period of 59 to 61. Um, this is a classic kit. Absolutely love this. It's a classic early 60s sort of vibe about it. Short sleeve, V-neck. Oh, just clean. Clean, tidy, love it. Socks are amazing. Let's have a look at it. Come on to the fifth and final kit then we're going to look at for this episode in the series. Again, three different base combinations for this one. Now, this one is a lovely kit. Actually, one of my favourites. Um, I think it's probably because it's predominantly blue. But I just think the colour combination works really well. And the yellow is a really nice sort of highlighting feature. Um, so they wore this variation of the kit between 59 and 61. And in 1959-60... Leeds were back in the top flight of English football. Um, but in true Leeds fashion of the time, they were relegated. Uh, once again, to the second tier of English football, going down with the mighty Luton Town. So this kit then, um, let me just spin one of these guys around because it's got some nice little little D10 short stripe in as well, which I think is a nice, really nice feature. Just a nice, clean and crisp kit. The hoop socks again, Hoop socks can really make a difference to a kit. Socks are an underrated element of kits. Um, for example, Croatia always looks better when it's partnered up with the blue socks. Remember that Holland kit? Um, 
I think it might have been from one of the Euros or from the World Cup that had this light blue socks with it. So it was orange, white, light blue. Just looks amazing. Really, really helps set that kit off. But with this one, the hoop socks make a massive difference. And those short stripes um, are key as well. They're a nice feature, nice design feature. Not too much going on with this one, but a nice clean line. The V-neck, um, the classic V-neck short sleeve. Absolutely beautiful. And in the final season, they wore this kit then. So 60-61, Leeds' relegation hangover had them finishing in a lowly 14th in the second division. An ageing squad, tight for money, used an incredible, well, an incredible amount of players for the period nowadays, tends to be fairly normal. They used 27 players during that period. Um, but if you paid your money, you got what you paid for with Leeds because you'd have been guaranteed goals. In this season, Leeds United scored 75 goals. So if you were a Leeds fan, you got entertainment. The unfortunate thing was, um, to go alongside the 75 goals that they scored, they conceded 83. However, future Leeds Hall of Famer, which I'm going to put him in. I'm going to make this guy um, the future Leeds Hall of Famer because I've not painted his hair yet. The future Leeds Hall of Famer, Billy Bremner, netted nine. So the future was bright for Leeds. There's a little bit of a sign of things to come. Um, those that know, lo know that Leeds got pretty good um, through the 60s and the 70s um, to the point where they were champions, champions of Europe. Um, but yeah, so that is the end of this run of kits then. In terms of the base combinations with this one, kept it quite simple. Couple with the blue outer and the yellow inner. One all blue. Um, I think you can see with this one, with the all blue, the hoop sock um, is not so exaggerated. With the yellow inner, it really, really pops. And with the other way around, again, the blue kind of disappears a little bit, but it gives a nice aesthetic. Um, and that's going to be the end for that kit. There we go then. That is the first five kits that we're going to show you guys in episode one of the Leeds United Centenary Special. Now, Hopefully you guys can see how we make our frames different. Now this is an easier case because they're all being done at the same time. It's a lot easier to make sure they're all different, but I guarantee every single frame we've ever done has been completely different. Um, we actually did 10 Leighton Orient frames once um, and they were all different. They all have to be different. All of the same kits, but they have to be different. Um, it's part of what makes it unique. We make them special for people that are having them and I want everyone that has one of these to know that or to feel like you know they're special they mean something these kits these frames have been created um, from the brush from me to the player um, and as part of what makes them special and part of what drives me to create these is that it's your club and you love it and you love your club as much as I love mine um, it's about me putting that and my drive and my passion in that is to try and create something completely unique that represents your club and your love for your club as best we can. So every single frame, guys, is always unique. It doesn't matter how many times we do it, I will find a way of making it different. Even if it's only one slight change, it will be different. It will be completely unique. There will not be another frame that is identical. And part of that obviously comes from the fact that everything is hand-painted. There will always be slight variations um, in finish. Now, personally, I love that, that's why I prefer the heavyweight hand-painted style of figure in general because it's part of the person that made it is in that figure. Um, the machine paints and stuff like that, for me, just lack a little bit of soul. Um, they lack a little bit of meaning. Um, so for me, I've always been about the hand-painting vibe, which is why originally we start, I started hand-painting stuff and it just kind of evolved into creating these histories um, and creating these artworks, really, for you guys. So that is the end of episode one. If you've enjoyed what you've seen and you've enjoyed the little Leeds United history lesson, please come back for episode two. I will try and get it out as soon as possible. Hope the Leeds fans have enjoyed it. Um, you're a passionate bunch. Uh, I've got to give it to you. Um, I've seen Leeds play Leicester, I think, twice. And on both occasions, the away fans have been absolutely amazing. Um, we've won both games, uh, which for me has been great. But you can never fault Leeds fans for their passion and their support. Um, as much as the footballing world dislikes Leeds for whatever reason you've got to hand it to their fans they are without doubt some of the best in the country um, I'm not going to say the best uh, because I don't want to say it um, but you, you know, you're great fans um, I hope you guys um, appreciate the, the series we're making and appreciate the artwork and the representation that I've made for your club 
Um, to say, if you are new, please get um, minimize this video now, put a subscribe on the channel. There's gonna be at least two more episodes, possibly three of this series. I'm gonna to continue to look through those kits and the history of those kits. Um, and leave a like on the video, guys. YouTube's algorithm, I've mentioned it before, the more likes a video gets, YouTube's algorithm goes, oh, other people will wanna see this video as well. And they'll get suggested it and it increases my reach um, to the world. Follow us on Twitter at Westwood underscore TS. Um, the Leeds fans on there actually have been great retweeting things and getting involved. So hopefully we can continue to grow this and get a few more of you guys on board. I need some passionate Leeds support for the channel. I need you guys to start singing, we're the best YouTube channel in the world. We're the best YouTube in the channel in the world. Like you sing, we are champions, champions Europe. When you're not, and I'm not, but if we can get that support behind it, then we'll be making our way there. Um, get the bell on so you're notified. Drop any emails you want if you want to get in touch, if you fancy one of these yourself and you want to get in touch, westwood underscore ts uh, is our Twitter and the email is westwood.ts at gmail.com. Um, thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.